So in this video, we're gonna do a buyer's guide for server rack lithium iron phosphate batteries and what to look for when you purchase them and some of the pros and cons of some of the most commonly available models. And it can be hard to choose because a lot of these use the same circuit breaker, the same BMS, the same cells. So it's really hard to make a decision on which one you should actually purchase. Now currently, a server rack battery is probably the easiest way to build a large off-grid installation. They're very easy to scale. Some are UL listed. Um, they have great features. If you want a communication protocol that works with your inverter or all-in-one system, some of the batteries actually have that. And they're easy to use. All you need is a couple battery cables and you can connect it to your system. Also, it's a modular system. And if you have a warranty claim for one of the batteries because it fails, you can remove it from the system and replace it with a new one very easily. And this system is pretty large. I actually have a lot of server rack batteries behind behind the camera, on the side of the camera, but this is my main system. Over there we have a 30 kilowatt hour tower, a 20 kilowatt hour tower of SOKs. These two are not connected. And then over here we have two jack, or three jack appears, two trophy, another large trophy server rack. So I have a lot of experience with every server rack battery on the market. And I have a lot of opinions of what I like and I dislike about each one. Now every battery in front of you, I have teared down in previous videos. So if you wanna see those videos, please check them out. In this video, I'm gonna go through each model and talk about what I like and dislike about each one. So first battery is the EG4, and this is the most popular server rack battery for off-grid solar installations that is being used on the internet right now. Um, I don't know of a single other company that is selling as many as these. I don't know how many they're selling, but going by my affiliate links, it's probably like 10 times more than everybody else. This is the most popular by far. And in my system, I've never had a single issue. They are fantastic and they are at a very good price. They are much cheaper than the other ones on the market. Now this stack is their budget model or the Life Power 4. They have a more expensive pro model that we're gonna review in a second and that one costs more money. But most people stick with their budget model because it's a fantastic price and these are UL listed, so you could actually pass an inspection if you want to, if you use their batteries. Next, the build quality is fantastic, and we did a teardown multiple times on this channel, but people have some issues with this battery. The pre-charge resistor circuit doesn't seem to work that well, and they do not have documentation for it in the manual. Furthermore, some videos posted actually showed people using it correctly, and it still did not work, and it shut itself down. There's lots of people on the forum complaining about this issue. You could actually alleviate this by manually charging the capacitors yourself. So check out my previous video on how to manually do this with a resistor, but that is like the biggest downside. Besides that, I've not had a single issue with these. Um, the price is incredible, especially for what they're using inside. The cells are the same as other server rack batteries. They have high quality DC rated components and it's a good battery. I like this one because there's no screen because I don't care about the details that the screen shows. Um, I'm just gonna use a clamp meter and make sure that every single battery is feeding in and out of the system. And then I know that it's working properly because personally, I don't like to check on my system. If I have to check on it, it's because I did something wrong. I didn't design something properly. Also, the form factor is fantastic. We've got 30 kilowatt hours right here. Just compare it to the 20 kilowatt over here. So you're going to have to have three of these towers for the same as two of these. So I prefer that with the EG4 as well. Now installation is very easy with this server rack. You just slide the batteries in with a friend. You use some screws, which I never do. And then you connect these leads to the bus bars. And then you connect your system with some cables to the bus bars and that's it. It's very easy to build. I actually really like this server rack. It's a lot better than the other ones available. Now this is the SOK server rack battery. And this is a fantastic battery. I love the build quality and everything works really well. I haven't had anybody complain about the pre-charge resistor issue um, that we're having on the EG4s. These things just seem to work. 
Furthermore, the documentation is better, especially with communication. Um, they write out everything on how to use this battery and it's very useful. Next benefit is look at the size of cables on these batteries. With the EG4s, these are like four or six gauge cables. Over here, we have a four aught gauge cable connected directly to the terminal. And they did that by design. These are actually very common terminals that all of the other server rack batteries now have. And personally, I like them. I know it's nice with the EG4 if you have the whole server rack, but if you're doing a DIY build and you can't afford this massive tower, I mean, you just are using cables, these are awesome. Next, it is not UL listed like the EG4, but they have plans to actually get it UL listed in the near future. Next, these are sold by Current Connected and they have fantastic customer service and support. I don't think I've heard a single person have an issue with this company at all. If you have a problem with any of the things that they sell, they will find a solution and they will have supportive documentation on their website to help you. The internal build quality of the SOK is my favorite. I've showed you guys in past videos, the cell holders are a block of metal. Like it's very strong. If you have a high vibration environment, the SOK is probably for you. If you're just going with a single battery, like an RV or something, I would go with an SOK. Next, the cells that they use in all of the SOK batteries, they have provided the data for their cycle life testing and degradation. I don't think any of the other companies have ever done that and I wish that they did. Now the big downside with the SOK battery is the price. That is the only thing. If you're building a large system, the price difference adds up. So if you're buying five of these, if you were to buy an EG4 instead, the sixth one would be free. And that's quite substantial, but this one has a screen and this one doesn't. And there's more communication ports on the SOK. And personally, I don't need this screen. I just wanna hook it up, test to make sure that it's actually working and I get full capacity, and then I move on. I do not like to check my solar power systems. I want them to be 100% autonomous. So most people will gravitate to the EG4 for that reason alone. But if you're not buying a lot of them, I would stick with the SOK, especially for small systems. The pre-charge resistor circuit, I don't know why, but it has had no complaints like the EG4 has. Not only is the SOK very strong, but it's user serviceable. It's the only one on the market that's designed to be taken apart in like 20 minutes. If you pop off this cover, you can pop off all of the bus bars with the screwdriver and take this whole thing apart. If you wanna switch out the BMS or have spare BMSs, you can do it with the SOK. You can change the BMS in the EG4s, but typically with their warranty, they want you to send the whole battery back. Um, also, their terminals on the cells are well these ones are not. They have screw terminals, so you can work on them yourself. Some people like that, some people don't, so it's really up to you. Now let's move on to Jack Appear Battery. This is their newest model, and we have three of their old models. I do not like the old model anymore because they had these really small terminals, but as you can see, I'm still using mine because I never had a single issue with its actual performance. Some people did complain about Jack Appear batteries and the responses that we got from Jack Appear on the forum were pretty bad and you can see them for yourself if you do a quick search. But on the new model Jack Appear, everything was solved and it's almost like a carbon copy of the SOK battery. Like everything is identical and I have a video showing both of them side by side. Now, most people stick with the SOK because the price difference is not that big and the customer support with Current Connected is a lot better. But sometimes Jack Appear has a sale and people want to buy a bunch of batteries with the screen, so they'll go with the Jack Appear battery. It is a good battery. It has the exact same cells as the SOK, has the same BMS, same terminals, same case. I mean, it's literally the same as an SOK battery, but you're not going to get the same support. Jack Appear does say that they're working on it and that they're going to get better better over time. They need some better English speakers because some of the posts that they respond with, they just are not good at responding coherently. Now, one difference between SOK and Jack Appear is SOK has their own design for cell holders, and that makes it very strong. So again, high vibration environment like an RV or a boat, I would stick with SOK. That thing is very durable on the inside. The Jack Appear is strong, but it has a very different design that's more similar to the other ones. Now, the next battery 
battery is Trophy battery. It's this one right here, which is massive. It's over 200 pounds. It's a 220 amp hour 48 volt battery. And then down here we have some 100 amp hour batteries. Over here is their new 220 amp hour battery, which I still need to review. And then their other 110 amp hour battery down here. These are actually very nice batteries and they use different cells than all the other server racks. They use exclusively Cattles and Eves, which are fantastic. Also, all Trophy batteries come with internal heaters. They're the only server rack battery on the market that has that. So if you're in a cold temperature and you need internal heaters such as a cabin, um, these are fantastic for that. Now I've tested these for over a year now and every single one has worked fantastically from day one and I've also done capacity tests. This one was damaged from shipping and it still works just fine. Also Trophy battery has the same features as all of the other popular ones but I like their screen interface a bit better. Also they have very strong terminals that are seen on the new Jack Appear and the original SOK. What I dislike about these for some reason at low state of charge with this large one, this is one of the first ones they ever made of this model, it makes a buzzing noise. And it's not an alarm, it's just this slight hum and it drives me nuts. And it can actually get pretty loud, but again, it's not a speaker or an alarm. It's just this buzzing that's coming from like right here. None of their other batteries do it, even their new 220 amp hour. So it might be special with the older model or something, but it does annoy the heck out of me. Sometimes I just turn it off, especially when I make videos. See right now it's not making it, so I'm leaving it on. But yeah, that is the only issue I've ever had. Some would argue that cattle and Eve cells are higher quality than the other ones. They are very expensive, but what they are lacking is the branding. Like you cannot tell what kind of battery this is. They do not have a logo on the front of the battery. Now Trophy Battery sent out this label to put on the front for my videos and I don't like it. This is not cool. Like I want you guys to be able to look at this and say that is a Trophy Battery. All of the other batteries you instantly know where it came from, but not with the Trophy. Like this looks just like a black box. Like they all have that. There's nothing on the front. I want to see the charge of absorption voltage, I want to see the low voltage disconnect, I want to see the capacity on the front, and I want to see that you are trophy battery. But there is nothing here. They are very good batteries and I don't think they're very popular because people don't know about them, but yeah, they, they need to work on their advertising. Also customer service and support, everybody loves them. They do a fantastic job, but yeah, you just don't know what battery this is. Furthermore, they have very different sizes than the other server racks. Like this one's very long and I don't know of a rack that can actually fit this. So they actually recommend customers this yellow rack that I have mine on because you can configure these in all all sorts of creative ways with this rack. And I love this rack. I love this thing so much. So I'm glad that they are recommending it, but it would be nice for them to have their own rack. But again, no problems at all with any of their batteries. Even my damaged batteries from Trophy work great. The internal heaters work, everything works. Um, it's fantastic. Now over here, we have the EG4LL. So this is EG4's more expensive battery, which is almost the same cost I think as the SOK. And it actually comes with a screen, some more communication ports, an on and off switch. And this one has no reported issues with the pre-charge resistor circuit. And this is a great battery, but because of the cost, if you're building a big system, most people are gonna go with the budget battery instead. This is a good battery though. I've not had any issues. The build quality is great. And the complaints on these have been very minimal. And I've even seen people on the forum say that the cheaper model didn't work with their inverter, but this one did. So if you have the money to spend, you could go with this instead. And because EG4 has the best server racks, in my opinion, you can slide these in there and you would have a very cool system. But yeah, it's kind of expensive. Now this battery, oh boy, this is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new Trophy 220 amp hour, and it's really nice and smaller than the older one. But again, look at the branding. There's no way to tell that this is a Trophy battery. They need to have a big label on the front of it so we can all see it. We will do a teardown on this one in the future, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna have the same build quality as their other batteries, but we'll find out in that video. So those are the main batteries, but I wanna show you what I'm using some of my server rack batteries for in my 
my backyard. So as you guys know, this is my solar powered golf cart. And previously we had Tesla Model 3 packs because they were very lightweight and they pack a good punch. The charge and discharge rate is incredible, but I do not like sleeping at night knowing that I have any cobalt based chemistry anywhere on my property. Um, if the BMS were to fail, like a FET was in a shorted closed position um, and you had solar panel voltages reach those cells, you could have a combustion event, thermal runaway, and it would cause a huge mess and destroy this golf cart. So a couple months ago, I actually swapped out those battery packs for some server rack batteries. So first we have an Orient Power wall mount battery that has the same parts as all of the other server rack batteries because this is the only one that could fit in here. The server rack batteries were too wide and I couldn't fit it inside and trust me I tried and that was very difficult. But this one slipped right in and it has the same BMS, the same terminals, the same cells as all of the other server rack batteries. But this did not work. I kept tripping the overcurrent protection because it was just too much continuous current when I was driving this golf cart. So I added a second battery and this is a Jack Appear server rack battery. I connected in parallel with the other battery and voila, it has worked flawlessly. And this thing is dirty. We had rain and some monsoons. Um, it looks awful, but guess what? It's still working great. And while I'm driving, I can see the capacity of my battery with this screen right here. So that's pretty easy. So two server rack batteries can handle the current for an inductive load for this golf cart, which is pretty impressive because sometimes it spikes up to like 300 amps, but it handles it just fine. Maybe the EG4, because the overcurrent protection on that is very sensitive, it might not work, but we'll have to test that in the future because that would be pretty fun actually. Now, one downside of having the jack appear this high is the handling characteristics, especially now that it's lifted, are awful. Having all this weight this high is not a good idea. You are better off buying a DIY golf lithium battery conversion kit where you can shove it all right here, but the battery is not going to be as big, but the performance will be good because it's designed for that use case. Now, if you guys have a server rack battery that I did not mention that you think I should, please let me know about it in the comments section below. I have seen some lower quality ones for the same price as these or batteries that I can't get my hands on, like the Pylon Tech. Um, for some reason in America, it's hard to do, um, and no one seems to be selling them, so there must be a reason for that. But with the current selection, it kind of hits everything that we need. Um, the EG4 is the most economical. The SOK is the strongest one with good customer support. The Trophy is the only one with internal heaters. And then the Jack Appear is pretty much a clone of the SOK, but worse customer support. So something for every budget and lots of good features that you would need for different use case applications. But if you think I'm missing something, please let me know below because I'm trying to find more server rack batteries. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this helps you. Um, if you wanna see more details about the internals I have those videos available but I really wanted to talk about the companies that are selling these and some of the problems that you might actually have with these batteries um, all of the ones that we mentioned still have a warranty and some form of customer service support it might be slow it might be bad but if something goes wrong with your battery you should be able to return any of these if something's wrong and that's very important especially because these all come from China America does not make these I don't know why they really need to get their act together and start manufacturing things but yeah we have to depend on china for these devices and it's very very unfortunate but if you want to live off grid and be less dependent on the government these chinese devices help you do that it doesn't make any sense it shouldn't be that way but yeah, this is a fantastic option if you wanna live off grid with solar power. Why can't America make this? It's a box with some cells, like come on. Anyways, before I go on a rant, I'm just gonna stop right there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you build an awesome off grid solar power system and I'll see you in the next video, bye.